Hello, everyone. My name is Gabriella, and I want to tell you a story about how I ended up in a very charming and terrible place in a real underground city. Nothing boded ill that day. I was walking in a small forest behind our house, listening to music and dreaming of how I would spend the upcoming holidays because there were only a few days left until they would begin. The gentle rays of the sun were making me warm and filling me with energy. And suddenly, I made a step and there was no support under my feet, so I fell down. Fortunately, the height wasn't great, but still I didn't land very successfully, having hit my foot quite badly. But everything seemed to be okay. I looked up and realized that it was a well. But why was it there? Who came up with the idea of digging a damn well in the forest? It was very unusual. And how can I get out of here now? Hmm, I am not the daughter of world high jump champions, so it's unlikely that I will be able to get away from here in the same way that I got into this place. Wait, what if I call my parents? Oh, well, of course, everything is like in horror movies. There is no mobile service here. Surely I can scream and try to call for help, but I think that there is a 1% chance of being found in this way. Then I went on to try to find some other way out. Well, if it existed at all. And no, for some reason, I didn't have any fear. After all, I was underground for the first time. It caused a very unusual feeling for me. And in any case, my parents would soon rush to search for me and track my last location through the police. After walking for about a hundred meters, when I was already bored with my route, I decided to go back, but suddenly noticed the light. Yeah, there was a glow in the tunnel ahead. I thought that some work was being done there and went in that direction. Soon I got to the large hall, which was lit by torches. On the walls, there were hanging horns and skins of some animals. This place was like a room in some old castle. It even seemed to me that at that moment, strict guards with spears would show up and take me away. From this thought, I got chills all over my body. Then I heard someone's footsteps and immediately hid under a standing stone ledge at the end of the hall. Of course, I found not the best hiding place, but I hoped that no one would notice me. A weird man entered the room. A bald spot was shining on his head and his clothes looked like the robes of Buddhist monks. Um, so where was I? Did anyone know what kind of place this was? The bald man took something from the table and left. I waited for some more time and took a risk to get out. It was probably better to return and wait for salvation at the place where I got here, or rather from where I fell here. But curiosity prevailed, and I went to the place where the bald man had gone. It's never too late to return. At least I would learn something about life underground. By the way, I never would have thought that it existed, and I am unlikely to get another chance like this to come in contact with something unknown in my life. I was walking along a huge and winding corridor with the ancient writings all around it, but I could not read them because the letters were unfamiliar to me. In the end, the corridor led into another room, in the center of which there was a marble table with a bald man on it whom I had seen some time ago. It was as if he was sleeping on the stone table, but he did not have any blankets or pillows. After looking closer, I thought the man had died since I didn't even notice the slightest movement of his stomach. Did he breathe at all? God, he used to be alive. What could have happened to him? I decided to come closer, and as soon as I approached his head, he suddenly opened his eyes and said that he needed to go. He immediately jumped up and ran away without even saying hello or goodbye. That was all really weird. Let's think logically. This man is very weird, and besides him, I have not seen anyone here. But the good news is that he seemed to be harmless. So, I dare to suggest that this is some kind of Buddhist hermit monk who decided to hide from civilization in a dungeon. Suddenly, I heard a lot of voices and the sounds of footsteps that came from the corridor. It was definitely not one person. What was going on there? It was time to run away. Although, because of fear, I mixed up the corridor and the room, and there was no time left to change my direction because a group of people was already around the corner. I hid in my office and decided to watch what was happening from there. Four people entered the room. 
They were wearing clothes similar to those of the bald man, had torches in their hands, and in their free hands they were carrying a huge bag. This looked like maybe the bald guy told them about me, so they were coming to pick me up and put me in the bag, making me a sacrifice to their gods. Mom was right, saying that my curiosity would kill me one day. I guess that very moment has come. Meanwhile, people started singing some strange songs that sounded like vibrations and began dancing to the beat. Mere seconds mattered at that moment, so I had to rescue myself before they killed me. Pulling myself together and taking a deep breath, I ran as quickly as I could where the bald man had gone, that is, further down the corridor. Along the way, I was screaming that I would not surrender to them alive. I had to run for a long time. On my way, I saw more than one room and many weird attributes, but I didn't care about them because my main task was to save myself. When I finally got out of there, I found myself on an abandoned construction site. I knew this place very well, and usually even the police did not visit it. In our city, there are a lot of horrible rumors about this spot. I don't want to scare anyone, but people even disappear here. Oh, this gives me goosebumps. I need to get out of here as soon as possible. I started to move cautiously toward the exit and then met another group of people. From their clothes, I realized that they belonged to those underground inhabitants. I hid behind the boxes and waited for them to pass by. Fortunately, in 30 minutes, I was home and had a very unpleasant aftertaste from all of this. Apparently, these people keep the whole city in fear, and I was so close to them. It's good that I didn't get into trouble. I was trying to come to my senses for a long time and was thinking about everything I had seen. Should I contact the police? Should I tell reporters about everything? I did not know what to do and postpone making a decision for a while. I was so surprised when, after a couple of days, I came across that bald man out on the street. He was hurrying somewhere, but I decided to take a chance and ask him about everything. After all, we were not in the dungeon, and here he would not be able to do me any harm, even if he was a real villain. I came up to him and said, Excuse me, sir, you and I met underground about two days ago, but at that time you kind of left too soon. I would like to ask you a couple of questions. After that, the bald man said that he did not understand what I was talking about and hurriedly rushed away. Well, again, he was running away from me. What was going on after all? Since the dialogue did not take place yet again, the very next day I went down to the dungeon once more. If you are now wondering why I went there, then you are not a curious person at all. This time, the feeling that they were watching me did not stop bothering me the whole way. At the abandoned construction site, there were heard some sounds every now and then. At some point, I even wanted to leave, but then I decided to finish what I had started. As soon as I entered the tunnel, someone abruptly grabbed me by the arm. After turning around, I saw my mother. I could not believe my eyes. She was also wearing very strange clothes, and because of my surprise, I even wanted to scream. However, my mom said that this is not the first time she noticed my interest in this place, and she would like to tell me everything. Here, there is a community of those who are sure that aliens are listening to all the conversations of earthlings. They think this is exactly why we often cannot get what we want. But they turned out to be smarter than everyone and went underground because a thick layer of soil and concrete does not allow an alien signal to get into the human brain. Here, they can talk about anything in the world without the fear of wiretapping. They can share their plans and just allow themselves to have a break from the constant control of their speech. Then I asked my mom why she and the other inhabitants of the dungeon were dressed so strangely, and she said that they were wearing only simple clothes made from natural fabrics for the sake of maintaining their own health. And unfortunately, on the ground, she still cannot wear such attire. By the way, in that suspicious bag, they brought seedlings of some plants to the dungeon. Using these plants, they strengthen their bodies and treat diseases. I asked my mom whether she had been a member of this organization for a long time, and she answered, for 15 years already. By the way, she met my dad there. 
It was impossible to believe this because they were always wearing ordinary clothes, didn't seem to be fond of conspiracy theories, and in general, they were like everyone else. But Mom explained that there, on the ground, they worked and lived like everyone else. But here, they felt that they were at home and could talk about the most important things. I don't know if this is a sect, but everything looks really innocent. These people certainly do no harm to anyone. However, something inside me refuses to recognize the normality of such an organization. What do you think? Is this a sect? Are these people doing the right thing hiding here? You can share your answers in the comments. Click the thumbs up button below this video and subscribe to our channel.